Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. This video is going to give you some practical tools or information on how to keep track of everything that's going on in climate change. We're being hit hard and fast by new climate reports all the time. You know, just in the last few months, we've had the IPCC SR 1.5 report talking about how 1.5 we we're gonna have huge problems at 1.5. I mean, that's pretty obvious. We're having them at one. And a two was much, much worse. It wasn't just incrementally worse, two degrees Celsius. We had the US uh, National Climate Assessment Report um, specifically focusing on changes in all the states. We had the Landsat medical report on how all of the human impact, impacts to human health from climate change. We've had the Arctic uh, assessment that just came out, which I'll cover in a separate video. So how does one follow all of these things? Right now, as I'm doing this video, we're drawing to the end of the uh, COP24 in Katowice, Poland. And right now they're deadlocked, very little progress, just a couple days left, a day left or something. Usually it'll probably run over time into the, through the weekend you know, if it follows uh, what ha normally happens. We also have the AGU, American Geophysical Union Conference, um, in Washington. And there's lots of new scientific papers coming out of that, lots of stuff that I'll be talking about in, in videos. So how does one keep track of all of this? So let me uh, show you basically what, what I do. And you can get a good overview of what's going on right now and most significantly there's a lot of different scientists that are that are opening up about how shit scared they are about rapid climate change you know and they really um, have concerns and worries about all the you know what's coming down the pipes for themselves their kids you know potential grandkids if we get that far okay so let's get right to the cut right to the chase here so this is my uh, Twitter feed here, okay? Um, so you can follow me, anybody can follow me on Twitter. You know, just open up an account, it's very easy, free. Follow Paul H. Beckwith, start adding some of the people that I follow and you can, you know, it's, it's a great way to get news source, news sources. So um, this is, uh, I pinned this to the top. I talked about, I did two videos talking about methane ver rising extremely fast and about the scale change in Copernicus. And uh, let me go through here. Arctic ecosystems are unraveling before our eyes. You just get all kinds of stuff. Car California's building carbon sucking factories. In other words, also known as trees and grass. Um, and so on. But what I really wanted to do is go through some of the um, stuff here, if I can find it. Here we go. Peter Kalmus. I have created a monster. Okay. Am I th so there's a series here. So let's click on him and have a look at him. Okay. So he wrote a book, What Can One Person Do About Climate Change? That's pinned on his site. And he had a tweet uh, a while ago here. Okay, just a few days ago. This is good. Walk into a non-smoker's house, light up a cigarette. Watch how they react. We need that reaction to carbon gluttony. Okay, um, so there's a hashtag, fucking terrified, get fucking terrified, excuse the language for younger people, about climate breakdown. I found it to be cathartic. We are not alone. Okay, so it all started with this tweet. Um, here we go, this was it. Am I the only earth scientist who is effing terrified about climate breakdown? 560 retweets, 2,300 likes, and so on. Okay, so, you know, in all these different places, we're a renewable energy company and equally terrified. I'm an earth scientist and I'm terrified, so I left academia to become a climate justice campaigner. I mean, basically, I took leave from my PhD studies, you know, and it just kept adding to it year after year to uh, do what I do, my videos. You know, eco-anxiety is, is a thing here. OK, 
okay? And there's all these people. I'm not an earth scientist, but I'm also terrified. Just listening to Gwen Dyer on climate wars was enough. And you can go on here and people, this started a meme. I'm not a scientist, but extremely terrified. Um, and then people started saying, well, I'm uh, just a dad and terrified. Just a dad and terrified. I'm a biologist and terrified. I'm a, you fill in the blanks. I'm a, you know, I'm a taxi cab driver and I'm terrified. I'm a, you know, and people just went crazy and they took this and it started a really big meme here, you know, being a human climate scientist, the informal survey. Okay, so there's all kinds of stuff. So people, um, scientists have been reticent um, about talking about the dangers of climate change and for many different reasons, um, and none of them are valid anymore. Okay, so um, anyway, you can go to this. I highly recommend that you have a look at this, um, in this link and read through it. There's lots of other people that are feeling grief and worry and stress and anger about climate. And it's very important for you to be able to deal with that. I talked a little bit in three videos about heart, the latest in neuropsychology, hardwiring the brain. I'm not, it's totally different. I'm not talking about thinking positive and glossing over any negative stuff. What I'm talking about is we all have moments in the day when we have very positive experiences, but the brain is wired for negativity. So in order to fight the wired of the brain for negativity, and there's all kinds of negative stuff on um, climate change, you know, every day, every hour, every minute, we can use those positive moments to strengthen our resilience, make us more resilient. And, um, and I'm not finished with this topic. Um, yesterday I picked up this book, which is the latest book by Rick Hansen, Resilient, and just started reading it, and it's amazing stuff. I'd recommend it for any people with climate anxiety, and I am going to a um, conference next year, and I'm going to try to get him invited. I'd love to meet him and hear him speak, um, but that's for another topic. Okay, so... You know, you can go through these threads, and I actually added to it somewhere. Um, look at that! See the see the lights and flashing. This is an also this is a practical notice. The cameras, ca the camera on the iPhone is running at a certain refresh rate. The video screen is running at a certain refresh rate. They're very close to each other, so you're getting interference. You're getting optical interference between the camera and the video screen and th those are fringes those are you can see fringes which are it's like a wave and that's the amplitude of the wave is maximum in the fringes and then there's dark spaces in between okay so it, it's happening at a certain distance as I move the camera further away it disappears and as I move the camera closer it disappears just to note if you're if you're taking using your iPhone to do videos off off a computer monitor you can also go and change the refresh rate of the computer monitor to avoid those fringes. Okay, so anyway, it goes on and on and on here. So this is very, uh, so this is my Twitter feed and I again encourage you to, to follow me. Um, let me close this, Look how slow this uh, computer is. And this is Peter's page and you can go home, you know, to back to my page. I don't have a tripod, so hopefully it's not too uh, wavy. Now, this is my general Twitter feed, all kinds of stuff on here again, right? But if I want to focus on the AGU conference, for example, then I type in a hashtag here, and I can look at the top for the latest. So if you go latest, you can actually follow individual talks. So the American Geophysical Union, 20, 30,000 scientists in Washington, all this week, they've been talking about stuff. So here's you know, one comment, I wish the average citizen and policymakers could attend the AGU to hear our experts who session after session repeatedly state how urgent climate change is and how dangerous delay is. The concern in their voices is palpable. Now, these are scientists. These are stoic, you know, unemotional scientists. And 
they have kids and they have families and they live places that are being trashed and they're get, starting to get scared shitless about climate change. Um, so you can go through and you can see the most common things that are going on here, the different panels. Don't ask me why I'm not there. I should be there. I was at last year's in um, New Orleans. But I think in 20, 2019 is going to be a big year. I'm going to do lots of traveling, lots of talks, lots of conferences. So if you want me as a guest speaker, um, let me know and I'll, we'll try to, I'll try to get out there to speak for a few days to your different groups and so on. I'll, I'll start, you know, entering things into my calendar. If you just pay for, you know, I can room, have room and board um, just at somebody's house who's organizing it and, uh, you know, give a series of talks, etc., on any aspect of climate change, my videos, any, any particular thing. You might call me a polymath. Uh, I try to be, you know, know something about everything, okay? If you want more, if you want to see what's going on right now, you can go latest. If my computer ever updates, then it will run through all the latest tweets, and if they're all on a specific talk or whatever, you can get, uh, you know, very good information. So these are talks that have just happened and stuff that's happening very recently, okay? Um, People put up their posters and presentations and stuff. I mean, there's a vast amount of information there. Now, it's not just this hashtag. There's another hashtag, AGU18. Not sure which one is the most popular. When the Arctic starts to thaw, that is not good for the planet. Well, it started to thaw a long time ago, right? And it's just getting worse and worse and worse. Um, lots of information here. How are old model predictions doing? So there's models from 81, 84, 2000, 2005, right? And how are they doing? Which, and that's not very done very often, right? Once a model does a prediction, people tend to focus on the latest model and so on. Okay, so, okay, so basically you don't have to be at a conference and you can get a lot of stuff from the conference. What about the COP24 in Poland? Okay, that started, that's, we're, we're running in, at the, we're, we're, we're closing on the end of the second week. Okay, um, there's one more official day of the conference and then it'll go into overtime, I'm sure, this year. Can a coalition of superheroes save the COP24? You know, it's in Poland, it's in coal country. We've got the US and Russia and Saudi Arabia in Kuwait saying we don't like we, you can't use the word welcome so we if we welcome the the um, so the the intergovernmental panel on climate change in Paris in 2015 they decided to request scientists put together a document the SR 1.5 document to compare and contrast the effects of 1.5 degrees Celsius versus 2 degrees Celsius. So they put together this massive document, took a long time, a lot of effort, a lot of people, submitted it in October, just before this year's COP conference. And the, at the conference, they couldn't agree to welcome the report. They noted the report, so I'm not sure the implications, but noted in the legal jargon of the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change is, is a, a cop-out. You don't mind the, the pun. This girl, 15 year old girl, was the girl who went on strike, and she's just, you know, incredible, done incredible things. She's probably the, you know, the, the hero of the, the conference. And uh, my friend Stuart Scott um, got her there, her and her dad there. I mean, Stuart does incredible stuff. I've been jealous for the last two weeks that I'm not there because I've spent other years being there helping steward at the COPs, and I think I'm going to continue that moving forward. didn't happen this year. Okay, so let's go back. Oh, this computer is not so good here. Okay, so we can get the latest stuff here. Okay, if it ever comes up, the computer is very slow. I apologize for that. Um... But anyway, there's, there's lots and lots of really good information that you can get from Twitter on climate. Thank you.